We can easily calculate the energy and momentum of EM waves. And in this section, I also introduce a new quantity called intensity. Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're in section 822 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, second edition. We just figured out how monochromatic waves, um, monochromatic plane waves, behave in a vacuum and how to calculate the EMB fields at any given point in time for a given wave of specific frequency. Now we're going to look at the energy momentum and introduce the concept of intensity. Keep in mind, what follows applies only to monochromatic plane waves. There are other types of waves and we're not talking about them. So when you do your spherical wave homework, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but the, it's, it's a very easy process, so you should be able to read or write everything. U, the potential energy, the energy of an E and B field is one half of epsilon naught E squared plus one over mu naught B squared. Very simple. So um, we have the relation that our B field is whatever the E field is divided by C. That's what we derived earlier for an electromagnetic wave. And so that's just the square root of mu naught epsilon naught of E. Plug that in to here, and we get one half epsilon naught e squared plus b uh, b squared, which is it's going to be something e squared. So we're going to have a mu naught on top and an epsilon naught on top, and the mu naughts cancel, and so we have epsilon naught. And so look at this. This is interesting. The amount of energy stored in the e field is the exact same as the amount of energy stored in the b field at any given moment of time. Okay, and the total energy is just epsilon naught, whatever the electric field is at any given moment of time. As we saw, the electric field and magnetic fields are at their maximum together, and when they're zero, they're both zero together. And so we have a situation where looking at a wave, a snapshot of a wave, as we move along the x-axis, we're going to see some spots where it's maximum energy and some spots where there's zero energy. Also, if you stand at a certain point and let the wave pass by you, you're going to see the energy increase, decrease, hit zero, and then increase again, and then decrease and hit zero. Uh, let's write out the equation for that. Uh, so E squared is, we're going to have epsilon naught. What's E squared? That's our epsilon, or E, e naught. Um, I just realized I did something wrong in the last video, but it's a tiny mistake and you'll catch it cosine squared of kappa x minus omega t plus delta in the n hat direction, but we don't care about n hat direction, so ignore that. Okay, that is the energy at any given point in time or space for a monochromatic plane wave. Um, what's next? Then we have, oh, I should probably draw a graph so you understand this better. U, x, t, whatever. So it's going to go, it kind of makes this weird. And this is just, you know, epsilon e, epsilon naught e squared, e naught squared, whatever that is. Okay, next we have energy flux density, the pointing vector. So S vector equals 1 over mu naught. I remember a previous video where I forgot that factor and everything was stupid. E cross B. Okay, so the flux, the energy flux density, the pointing vector represents the energy flux density, the rate of energy passing through a surface at any given point in time. So E cross B, what does that look like? Well, we have that these are two uh, perpendicular fields. They're always perpendicular to each other. Um, so we just take the magnitudes and multiply them by each other in the direction. If you take E cross B, so E cross B, for instance, will give you the direction of motion. So we have 1 over mu naught um, E naught. Um, I'm just going to write it out here just in case anybody doubts me. And then 1 over C, E naught, kappa X minus omega T plus delta. And direction is in the direction of motion. Let's say we're going in the X direction, so it's the I hat. Okay, so 1 over mu times 1 over c uh, gives us um, c times epsilon. E naught squared, cosine squared, kappa x minus omega t plus delta. And well, e naught, epsilon naught e naught squared is just, it's just c times the potential energy pointing in the i hat direction. That's all it is. 
So S vector is the speed of light times the potential energy which we derived moments before pointing in the direction of motion. Okay, so here again we have the energy flux density. So the energy is going to quickly, at, at the maximum, it's flowing very quickly. At the minimum, or at zero, when it's when the E and B fields are zero, there's no flux density passing through. So the next interesting thing uh, is momentum. Remember, momentum we discovered was um, p vector was just one over c squared times the s vector. We just calculated the s vector, so that's going to be one over c u i hat. That's the momentum of the wave. Uh, once again, the momentum of the wave has a maximum and a minimum of zero. And um, notice the momentum never points backwards. So uh, because we're taking the squares of the fields here with the u. Um, so there's this curious relationship. The magnitude u is equal to the magnitude of the momentum times c. And if you are familiar with relativity, hopefully you are, um, it should be no surprise because e squared is equal to pc squared plus mc, uh, mc squared squared, right? So of course the energy is pc of light. It has no mass. So um, that's curious. Uh, it's, it's one of the things that helped people accept Einstein's theory of relativity as possibly being true. The next thing I want to talk about is the average over, so if we take a complete cycle and average what these values are, or if we wait for many, many cycles and see what the average of the values we record are, and for, if we're waiting many, many cycles, we don't have to be have an integer number of cycles. We can um, include the tail end of a partial cycle, and it's not going to throw off our results by very much, if at all, um, especially if we're taking billions and billions of cycles like we would in, in a real laboratory. Okay, so the average of cosine squared, um, one over half of epsilon e not squared. Um, so the one half comes from the fact that the average of cosine squared is one half. And then the average of s, s vector, yes. The average of one s vector is one half of cu, well, the one half is already in the, the u, so c times the average u in the i hat direction, and the average momentum is just one over c, the average of u in the i hat direction. And so the bracket notation hopefully isn't foreign to you. Um, the the reason why we're talking about average all of a sudden is because I want to introduce intensity. Intensity is simply the average of s, the magnitude of the pointing vector. And so in the case of an electromagnetic field, the intensity is simply 1 half c epsilon naught, the maximum electric field squared. That's the intensity that we get. So um, the intensity is useful because it tells us power transfer. It tells us how much power is being transferred. This is a very easy section. Um, I hope you don't get uh, too confused by it. Uh, take some time to memorize some of these so that when you you'll recognize them when you see them and you won't get stumped on a test. So thanks for your time. Oh, if you have any questions, comments below. Thanks. Bye. Oh, like and share with your friends too, please. Thanks for your time. Bye.